beef rib. Okay, this yeah, is, I call this a dinosaur Angus. rib. Yeah, we call them dino okay, ribs. Okay, so so tell me about this, because I mean, come on, look at this thing. Yeah, it's huge. What? Yeah, well, some okay. of some of we cut away almost two two pounds. That was up there pretty heavy. They uh, it's a real rich meat. They're real. Rich. Hey, what's up? It's Luis with America's Best Restaurants and we travel the country coast to coast to find the places where you need to eat at on a weekly basis. And today we are in Cloudcroft, New Mexico at the top of the mountain. And as we're driving, we're rounding the bend and we see this place called Mad Jack's Mountaintop Barbecue. And we see a ginormous line. There's still a giant line inside the restaurant. It is jam packed. And that's a signal that the food here is absolutely great. I see the sign that says sold out. So you know what, let's jump in. Let's see what we see. Come with me. All right, everybody. So Jack, I just went through a sea of people. You gave me a sample of the brisket. Now I want to find out how you trim it. You're, you're training you, Ben, yes? You, you're going to learn all our secrets. Yeah, Ben's new for us. Okay. He's, he's still in training, but he's doing a good job. But uh, we start off on this leaner side of the brisket okay. and uh, take a lot of this lighter stuff. You can see what he's trimming off. We don't get too crazy on it, but uh, some of that thicker stuff like that we take off. Right. So that's a little bit more like silver skin. Yeah, a like little a bit. silver skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to take that off because that's very tough, especially when you cook it. You've been yeah. chewing on that for years. Yeah, some of the heavier stuff we took off. I like to leave some of the lighter stuff. Right. Uh, just for a little protection. Well, and that's but, uh, flavor too. Yeah. Right? It, it, it yeah. keeps the brisket moist and everything. We don't take all, some people take get real aggressive right here and took a lot of that out. We leave most of that. We just kind of flatten it out. I want the brisket yeah. to lay nice and flat on the pit. Yeah, we trim down this side. We took a lot of this off to clean it up. Mm -hmm. And then we can see how thick the fat is. You know, every brisket's a little different. Right. <clears throat> some are easier to do, some are harder. We usually come down this side and we'll leave it a, you know, about a quarter to three eighths inch thick. You kind of leave mm -hmm. the fat cap. Um, so it's usually right in this area here we'll take some off. You see this one was already kind of scalped a little bit. Mm -hmm. and we'll round this off a little bit. Well, we'll let them, we'll let them finish up here and then we're, we'll go and sit down over there and try some food. Fair enough? Okay. Oh yeah. Awesome. You're in for a treat. All right, everybody. So now is the moment I've been waiting for the whole day. I'm sitting here with the legend, Mr. Mad Jack himself. Yeah, you're in for a treat today. Oh, I passed the treat. <laughs> when, I, well, when I walked through the door, you already put me to yeah, work. Let's, yeah. let's do some size and everything. So much we fun. We don't play around here. No, we do <laughs> definitely do not. We're pretty serious. You definitely do not. As we, when we were pulling up, ginormous line of people, and we were, me and my videographer, we're looking at each other, where are we gonna park? Finally, we found a spot. We're into the promised land right now. You brought us a lot of food. I even have some that is off camera because you guys kept bringing it up. We said, no, 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 no more. <laughs> we, can't, we can't anymore. I'm about to pass out. Let's start right here because you are very well known with the brisket. Yes? Yeah, our brisket okay. is definitely the So tell me about the brisket. Seller. We start off with a really good cut. We uh, we get them from Creekstone Farms. We're using their all natural line of brisket. Okay. And uh, everything we do here is old school. We smoke it all night with the all wood fire. And uh, I'm from Central Texas, so uh, you know back home, all the old barbecue joints here, we all use post oak. And so uh, every six to eight weeks, I hook onto my big trailer and head down to Lockhart and get a big load of post oak and bring it back up here. It's all the little things you do. I think you know we use a really good cut of brisket it's and then uh, uh, use that post oak. All wood fires. We don't have no gas or anything. That's that. That is yeah, a lot of work because it's a lot of babysitting, right? It's because all night fire long. behaves. I've got, I've got multiple guys that watch the pits at night, and uh, these went on the pit around 8:30 last night. And came wow. off this morning around 9:30, 10 o'clock. Wow! Uh, and, and, and when you slice that brisket, I saw you just. Yeah. You're, you're the you're an entertainer. Let me tell you, <laughs> and you're slicing the brisket, and it's just so yeah. juicy. It we know comes how to out. Have a good time here. Absolutely, it's yeah. glistening. And and you gave me a sample earlier. It completely just. Yeah. Oh my God! It melts it in your mouth. It's unbelievable. Mouth. The bark is beautiful. Yeah. It's perfectly it salty. Uh, it's a secret rub on there that uh, I normally don't tell people. And uh, but maybe y'all are kind of special. Maybe I'll go ahead and let you know what it is on this uh, on the beef rib too and the uh, brisket. It's a special rub called salt and pepper. <laughs> we like to keep that kind of simple. <laughs> I like that. I like we how you set that up. Yeah. <laughs> That's pepper. awesome. Yeah. That's I mean it's fantastic, and I know you are big time known for brisket because. Yeah. I went through a sea of people that just come in here, right? And a lot of people are ordering brisket. I mean, it's nonstop. Yeah. It, it's fantastic. And like I said, everything we've had even off camera is unbelievable. So you're from Lockhart, Texas. 
Born and raised. Barbecue capital, right? Of Texas. That's right. Did you yeah. already always knew that you were going to do this? No, not, okay. at, not at all. This was a second career for me. Okay. I, uh, you know, I got out of high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And my uh, dad had a real small uh, Chrysler Dodge dealership in Lockhart. And he wanted me to come help him. So I thought, well, I'll help daddy, you know, maybe for a year or two to figure out what I want to do. And then go to college. You got to be careful. You know, just don't know where life's going to take you. After about a year or two, I decided to just stay. And I stayed there for 30 years helping dad. 31 years helping wow. dad with the Chrysler dealership. But uh, like you mentioned, Lockhart is uh, known as the barbecue capital of Texas. And we got some old historic barbecue restaurants there. And uh, I was always in and out of them. When I was 16, 17, I worked at one of them called Black's Barbecue. And uh, I think it was the atmosphere of those places I loved. Every time I'd go in one with the smoke stained walls, these places have been barbecue joints for a long time. Uh, one of them over a hundred years. And uh, so anyway, I kind of got the fever for it. And uh, I always liked the atmosphere of those places. In uh, 2009, Chrysler was having some financial troubles and the government bailed them out. When they did, Chrysler pulled the plug on over 800 small dealer dealerships. So uh, we, uh, my dad actually lost a franchise in 09. That kind of ended that dream of me ever being the Dodge dealer there. I remember mean, one day, kind of what pushed me to barbecue, I was outside and uh, dad went by a pressure washer. So I was washing a truck with a water hose and it was a cold winter day and the wind was blowing and my pants were getting wet. And I remember thinking, good God, here I am like 47 years old and I'm just a wash boy. And uh, that day for lunch, I went down to one of our famous places called Smitty's and uh, went into Smitty's. I was talking to one of their pit masters, old Pablo, and looking at those smoke stained walls. And I remember thinking, man, I'd love to own a barbecue joint. And uh, so anyway, I go back to the car lot and I tell my dad that. And he kind of laughed and he said, well, he said, if you ever really want to do that, you ought to get you uh, one of those food trailers. I said, that was sometime in late 09, maybe early 10. And about a year and a half or so later, I've been saving my money and scrimping and saving. And I finally had enough to buy a trailer. So I went over to San Antonio and bought a brand new, nice food trailer. And I drug that to my dad's car lot. And one question I hear all the time is, why is this place called Mad Jack's? Well, uh, Jack was actually a, uh, my, my grandfather. Our last name's Jackson. And uh, my daddy would tell me stories about him. And he said all the old timers would just call him Jack. And, uh, and he died right before I was born, so I never met him. And I'm uh, kind of a real sentimental guy. So I thought I wanted to use that name Jack in the name of the barbecue uh, trailer. And when my friends saw that trailer, they, some of them asked me, they said, what are you doing with that food trailer? And when I told them I was going to sell barbecue, but this was in, I guess, 2011, maybe early 12. When I bought that trailer, I'd never barbecued anything. I uh, maybe grilled a hamburger patty, but I never barbecued anything. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyway, my friends, they, they knew I didn't know how to barbecue. And I told them I was going to sell barbecue out of that trailer in the barbecue capital of Texas with these legends just down the street from us. Wow. They laughed, they said, you done lost your mind. <laughs> they, they thought I was completely crazy. And uh, that's where the mad came from. I'm real competitive. And I took that trailer home and I practiced for about a year. And during that time, my daddy always told me, if you wanna be good at something, so talk to the guys that are the best. But by that time, uh, there's a guy in Austin named Aaron Franklin that's gotten real famous I'm for his barbecue. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I started reaching out to him, I started emailing him and uh, got to give him credit. He, no telling what kind of crazy questions I asked him, but he was super nice and answered whatever it was I asked him. Anyway, after about a year of practicing, I opened it up on my dad's car lot. And uh, you know, that trailer got real popular real fast. Once I started getting long lines, the city of Lockhart decided I had too many people going to my trailer without restrooms. They told me that if I was going to build these restrooms, for one thing, they wanted me to hire an engineer, but they also wanted me to put in what they call a retention pond for water drainage. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also wanted me to tear down a little building we had to add more parking. Anyway, their, their list was just too long. I couldn't afford to do it. And uh, I'd been dreaming of the mountains because we used to vacation up here in Rio Doso and Red River. And uh, in the summer, it's pretty common for Texans to come up here to cool off. And around that time, I noticed this building that I ended up with, they had, they had lowered the price of it a whole bunch. And uh, so everything was kind of meant to be. The city would give me all this pressure to they pretty well close me. And, uh, they lowered the price on this real estate up here. And when I saw the price drop, I thought, wow, man, I wish I could sell barbecue up there. That'd be really cool. And around that time, my dad, like I said, his health was getting bad. He, he called me over to his bedside one day. He told me about this hidden treasure. And about three weeks later, he passed away. And I went on a treasure hunt and I found it. 
with what daddy left me, that's how I was able to buy this building. I was able to pay cash for this building. I didn't have to borrow any money. And you never knew anything about this? No, we never knew anything about it. That's and, amazing. Uh, and I brought the Central Texas style barbecue up here. This well, I mean, I can clearly tell people love your restaurant because this is on a weekday and as we're filming, it's January. It's our slowest, January, February is the slowest month The of slowest, the year. Yeah, right. This, and then when we pulled out that, we had to drive around 30 minutes trying yeah. to find a oh, parking come spot. Come up here in June. It's a crazy line. Yeah, that was short today. Tell me about these rooms. I mean, these things are glistening in the light. Yeah. I remember when I that when was, I, they uh, came out. Okay. That, so I wouldn't say those these. are 100% Central Texas style. The brisket and the beef definitely is. The ribs, um, I made a trip out to uh, South Carolina. I wanted to learn more about doing pork. Oh my and God. we traveled all over North Carolina and South Carolina eating at different barbecue restaurants. And uh, one of them I liked a lot was Rodney Scott in Charleston, South Carolina. And he has a mop that he used. So we use a, a replica, you know, we kind of copycatted his mop and used it on the ribs. Other than that, seasoning wise, we start with a Texas style salt and pepper. But uh, then we uh, we mop them with that South Carolina So mop. is that you dab them on? Yeah. Oh my God, these yeah. are unbelievable. Yeah. You, know, you can taste the smoke. The pork is perfectly salt. That's the one thing. If you don't, Pork needs salt. It absolutely does. So pretty much since the beginning, you knew the barbecue was good because of when you originally formed it, but did you have an idea that it was gonna be like this or at least no. get to this level no. in in the mountains of New Mexico? No. Year round, there's 700 some odd people that live here. And uh, so when I moved up here, I was pretty naive. Like I said, I, I thought it would be uh, pretty slow. And uh, you know, one thing I didn't think about, we have a Holloman Air Force Base just down the road. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really think about those guys driving up, but uh, they come up, as you've seen today, they come up by the dozen. There was like, and, uh, there must have been 200 plus people here yeah. just from the military. Yes, yeah. and uh, Fort Bliss comes up now from El Paso. Uh, uh -huh. And a lot of times they come up and they'll bring their families that are visiting. So mm -hmm. uh, without a doubt, one of the greatest things or the neatest things for me about doing this is all the people have been able to meet from all over the world. You're like P.T. Barnum. <laughs> right, you're entertaining people and the whole thing because you were. Yeah, we I saw time. you when you're serving people. You asked, "Oh, where are you from?" Yeah. Oh, you're from Kansas, right. so you know what barbecue really is yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. You were literally talking to everybody. It I was. I think awesome. I asked almost everybody where they're from. Yeah, it's I, fantastic. I love hearing stuff like it's that. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I had a, a young guy approached me a couple weeks ago. He said, "Hey, Jack." He said, "What do you think the secret is to your success?" He caught me a little bit off guard. But uh, I told him, uh, I told him, I said, I think the first thing is you really have to love what you do and uh, have a passion for it. It don't matter if you're a plumber or electrician. Uh, and the second thing though, is you really need to, in this business, you need to love people. And I'm very much a people person and I love oh, people. A hundred percent. Yeah, if you're not a people person, it's probably not the business I mean, for you. You're walking but, around, talking yeah. to people, people want to take pictures with you, yeah, yeah. tell you the story, it's awesome. One of the things you wanted to have was this ginormous, Okay, this yeah, I call this a dinosaur rib. Yeah, we call them dino okay, ribs. Okay, so so tell me about this, cause I'm come on, look at this thing. Yeah, it's huge. What? Yeah, well, some okay. of some of we cut away almost two two pounds. That was up there pretty heavy. They uh, it's a real rich meat, a real filling. Mm. They come in ranks of three. Uh, it looks like you got a center cut there. Sometimes they try to outdo each other on how big of one they get. Oh really? Yeah. So does this have that special? Rub it's, from yeah, Texas, a salt, special salt, salt and pepper. pepper. We use a coarse pepper and a kosher salt. It's fantastic. Yeah. It is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It is a lot. Yeah. They've, uh, I mean. We usually blow through those. We open at 11 and you see the line at the uh, brisket and those beef ribs, people just go crazy for them. Usually uh, by one o'clock, we're out of beef ribs. At one thirty, we're usually out of sliced brisket. This is just, I've literally stepped into a different world of barbecue, yeah. 100%. I've yeah. been to a lot of barbecue joints. It's because I'm from Central Texas. It, it, it is, but- You it, haven't been down to Central Texas yet. But the craziest thing to me is we're, we're in the mountains of Mexico and I was even asking my video, like, where are we? Man? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, rounding the band and then I see the line, I'm like, Oh, okay, this must be yeah. good. <laughs> I mean, there's been hundreds of people today and you're technically closed and there's still a lot of people. Yeah. Blindfolded, hand tied, hands tied behind their back. This restaurant is 1000% certified legit. I absolutely love this place. The experience, the food. Where can people find you online? Online, you go to uh, madjacksbbq.com or our Facebook page, you know, Mad Jack's Mountaintop Barbecue. Mm -hmm. We're on Instagram, Facebook. So you can find a full listing for them on americasbestrestaurants.com. Jack, this has been an unbelievable experience. I'm glad I came. Thanks again. This is incredible. Bike. Oh my God. <laughs> mm. All right, everybody. Well, there you have it. As you can see, the sign says, sorry, sold out, but I was able to steal the beef rib. So look, if you want legit barbecue, come on down to Cloudcraft 
New Mexico to Mad Jack's Mountaintop Barbecue. It is absolutely unbelievable. I don't care what direction you're driving. This is one of the greatest barbecue experiences I've ever had in my life. That's it for us on this episode of America's Best Restaurants. We'll see you on the next one.